Hello and welcome to our Lancashire Branch video for the upcoming Moth Night 2020. Now, Moth Night is an annual celebration of all things moths and moth recording and this year is running from the 27th to the 29th of August. Now, it's a jointly organised event between Atropos, which is a journal all about moths, butterflies and dragonflies, Butterflies Conservation and the Centre for Ecology and Hydrology. It's about finding, recording and enjoying all moths. Now it's important to say that usually these are events where we all come together and we share our love of moths together. But obviously with recent events that's not possible this year. So the focus is very much about finding all the brilliant moths that are just on your doorstep. Now as well as being a fascinating, varied and a really beautiful group of insects, they also have a really important range of functions. Now, this is by no means a complete list but this includes things such as pollinating our plants just like our bees and butterflies providing food source for other species such as bats and birds but also as a really important indicator of just how healthy our environment is. They're a really sensitive marker to any changes, subtle changes in our environment. Now as well as celebrating all moths, each year there is a theme to give us one or more target species to look for. This year the theme is the four red underwing moths that occur in Britain and they're named because of this beautiful red colour that you see on their hindwing. Now, although there's four species that occur across Britain, there's one that we see here in Lancashire, and that's the red underwing. Now, red underwings fly in August and September. And they do come to light traps, but they can also be attracted using other methods, which don't need any fancy equipment and are really easy to do. Now, this is where we use a really strong smelling sugary bait to attract the red underwings, but it also attracts lots of other moths too. And these techniques are called sugaring and wine roping. Now in this video we're going to show you just how easy they are to do um, and how you can do them here in your own garden. So let's start off by making our sugaring solution. To do this you're going to need a kilo of dark brown sugar, the darker the better. You're going to need a tin of black treacle. You're going to need half a litre of brown ale or bitter, but if you prefer to use a non-diet fizzy drink that will do the job as well. And you're also going to need an old jar and an old paintbrush for later. Step one, pour your half a litre of ale, bitter or fizzy drink into a pan and heat it through for five minutes. Be careful as you go not to let it boil. Step two, carefully add your kilo of brown sugar. Be really careful not to burn yourself. And then slowly stir it all in until it's dissolved. Step three, add the whole jar of black treacle and then once this is in, heat the mixture for a further two minutes but again being careful not to let it boil. Step four, turn the heat off the mixture and leave it to cool before we transfer it into our jars. Step five, transfer the liquid from the pan to the jars. Now I've made myself a plastic funnel using an old plastic bottle and I've also got a pan with a spout just to help as well. So really carefully. Now the mixture here has enough to make about six jars, so if you want to make less, scale back your recipe, or just make some more jars and give them to your friends and neighbours. If you'd like to try wine roping, then you're going to need a bottle of red wine, again the cheaper the better, a kilo of sugar, a container to put the liquid into, and one metre length of either some rope, so I've got here some natural hessian rope, but any absorbent rope would do, or one metre strips of cloth instead. Step one, pour the wine into a pan and gently heat it through until it's warm, warm enough to dissolve the sugar into. Just be really careful not to let it boil. Now 
Once the wine has been warmed through, add in the sugar. And stir until everything's been completely dissolved. Step three, after you've allowed the mixture to cool, carefully pour it into your container. And then carefully add your lengths of rope or cloth and gently push them down into the mixture to soak it all up. We're then going to leave these to soak before we take them out later to see what maths we can find. So now that we've got our sugar in solution and our wine ropes, let's see how to use them. Now with the sugar in solution, you want to put it on any wooden surface, so be that a tree trunk, a branch, a fence. What's important is make sure you've got permission to put it there. But also, where if you're going to put it, it will leave a sort of sticky mark, so you don't want it anywhere that somebody's going to lean on it. You don't want to also put it anywhere where you'd be upset if a stain was left, but I haven't had that experience in my garden. What you're going to do, old paintbrush, put it into the sugar in solution. You can add a drop of rum just before this point, but I don't tend to bother, and it still works really well. Um, and then you're basically going to get the wooden surface, and I paint it on in narrow strips, not too thickly, like, like so. And I'll just keep going along the fence. I'll go and do some on the tree later. Just do some narrow strips here on the fence. Hopefully you can see that there. And I find it tends to stay there until the next rain. Then the rain washes it off. It's important with both these that you do it just before it gets dark. So it gives time for the alcohol and those vapours to attract the moths in. But not too long that the effect wears off. Now again with the wine ropes, getting them out just before dark, you can wear gloves for this because this solution is quite sticky. Um, but basically you want to make sure that your, your ropes are well soaked in so that they've soaked for that mixture. And you're going to lift your ropes out one by one. And let the worst of the drips off into the tray. And then basically you hang it up. And then it comes from here. And again, get all your wine ropes, you can spread them around the garden don't have to be next to each other like this. And again, this dropped will drip off and make sure there's nothing that you're upset about with some sticky drops being on below. So now that we've got our sugar solution and our wine ropes out, we'll come back to the next two hours just after it's got dark and see what comes into the garden. Now I'm going to do this for the next couple of nights here in my garden and I'll show you next what I found. So I've been sugaring and wine roping for the last four nights in my garden and here's a selection of the moths that I've been seeing. The first two are really common visitors to my garden. The one on the left is the large yellow underwing and it can be seen from June right through into November. It's quite easily recognised when you see its hind leg flashes bright yellow which is a warning to predators. Um, but you can also see the two little black dots right in the bottom corner near the end of the wing and just that overall size and shape it's definitely a species worth getting used to. The one on the right this is a common rustic ag what the ag stands for is aggregate which means there's a few moth species that cannot be told apart from their appearance so in this case we've got common rustic and lesser common rustic. It's a really variable species so it can be can have areas of yellow, grey, black, brown on the wings but usually the kidney shaped mark that you can see usually has some area of white within it. Next so next one that I saw was angle shades and this is a moth that we can see all year round as it, we see both moths that have bred here in the UK but also individuals that have migrated across from Europe. It's really quite an unmistakable moth from its shape and it's lovely olive green, pink and brown colours. It can fade to be just much more brown overall. And as again, as you can see, this is a great example. It's worth checking all the drips off your wine ropes because this is what the angle shade was using. Next is the sallow moth. So again, a nice common moth that can be seen from August right through into September here in the north of England. There are some other sallows, but this is one that can be quite easily recognised. The tip of the wing, as you can see, it's quite pointed and hooked. 
and the head and the thorax which is that top part of the moth near the head that's yellow um, and it has quite a variable pattern of yellow and brown and pink markings all over the wings so it can be completely yellow or much more pink very variable next this is one of my highlights of the week this is the old lady moss and it's a large moss that flies in july and august it's thought to be named the old lady because of the resemblance that it that it has to the black veils that widows used to wear now, this is one species that, again, isn't readily attracted to light, but can be quite frequent when you're sugaring and wine raping. So my garden's a great example of this. I've had one before in my light trap, just a single one. But this week alone, I've seen up to four at once coming to use the sugar and the wine ropes. Now, last but not least, this is the red underwing. Now, unfortunately, I haven't seen one of these this week, but August and September is the time to be out looking. As I've mentioned, they do come to light, but again, more frequently come to sugar. And you can also find them just resting during the day on the walls, fences and tree trunks around your garden. So definitely worth getting out and having a look. They are expanding their range northwards and can be easily recognised by the zigzag markings that you can see on their front wing, on that brown front wing, but also with that lovely red vibrant hind wing that they've got with those two black stripes and that white edge to the wing. Hopefully you feel inspired to give wine roping or sugaring a go. They're really easy to do and a brilliant way to see the moth in your garden without any fancy equipment. Now the main thing to remember about moth night is it's a celebration of everything moth. So whether you decide to use wine roping or sugaring, use your light traps, have a look around the flowers in your garden just after it's gone dark with a torch, or to just turn on the bathroom light and see what comes in. Just celebrate the moths and enjoy all of them that you see. The other thing that's really important is to tell us exactly what you've been seeing and where you've been seeing it. It helps us build up a really important picture of how healthy our moth populations and our environment is. Now there's several ways you can do this. The first is through the Moth Night website itself. After the 29th of August there is going to be an online submission form on the website and by submitting your records there you'll also um, have a chance of winning one of the prizes that are available. More details about that on the Moth Night website. Alternatively, there are other methods, either uh, now or after Moth Night's finished, where you can submit your records. So these are things such as the National Moth Recording Scheme website, really easy to set up an account there and to put all your records online. You can also use the Lancashire Moth Group spreadsheet, which you'll get from the Lancashire Moth Group website. Or you can um, submit your records using MapMate if you're a MapMate user. But again, make sure you do submit your records to us. Also, really want to hear what you're up to through our social media channels. So you can follow us on Twitter, where we're at, at BC underscore Lanks. So tweet us, show us your photos, tell us how you're getting on, ask us any questions. We're, we're here to see how, how much success you've had, but also to answer your questions. The other thing you can do is leave us a comment down below here in the YouTube comments. We'll be checking those after this video goes live. And again, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get a notification next time we upload any videos. Good luck.